hello everyone! My name is Stephanie Moran. Welcome back to another episode of Bedtime Stories. Today I will be reading you another section, another story from the 20th Century Children's Book Treasury, which you can get on Amazon. And the story I'm going to be reading to you is A Million Fish, more or less. Um, just a heads up, this story takes place in Louisiana, and there are a lot of characters that have Cajun accents, so I will be attempting to do these accents very tastefully. If YouTube decides that's a big no-no, I will take it down and will replace it with something else, something else, but I am pretty sure it's not really going to be a problem. Uh, my aunt lives. My my aunt Betsy lives in Louisiana, so I, so I, I kind of know what I'm doing. Without further ado, though, a million fish, more or less. Page for it. Sorry if this is taking a while. Let me try and find. There it is. Okay, A Million Fish, more or less, written by Patricia C. McK McKissack and illustrated by Dina Schutzer. It was early morning on the Bayou Clapeteau. Hugh Thomas had just tossed his line into the water when Papa Daddy and Albert Abijon came rowing out of the gauzy river fog. They were swapping bayou tails, just like they had for years. Morning to ya, Hugh Thomas called as they pulled up alongside the bank. Papa Daddy started right in. The elder of me was just saying that the Bayou Chapito was a mighty peculiar place. Take the time back in 03, when me and the elder here got a wild turkey weighed 500 pounds. Hugh Thomas's eyes filled with wonder. That's a powerful big turkey. Quickly, Elder Abijon took up the story and added, as we was marching that gobbler home, I spied a lantern that had been left by Spanish conquistadors back in the year 15 and 42, and it was still burning. I imagine a 500 pound turkey would feed a lot of people. Four hundred years! Hugh Thomas exclaimed in amazement. Papa Daddy lowered his voice to a whisper. Just when the elder picked up that ladder on the ground, got commenced to quake it, and the longest, meanest cottonmouth I ever did see raised up. The thing had legs and went to chasing us. The hounds broke and run, I got tangled up in the ropes, and that turkey got fleeing away. With a quick nod, he gave the story back to Elder Abijon. About time, a swarm of giant mosquitoes attacked. I lost my footing and dropped the lantern in a pool of quicksand. Might near fall in, fell in myself. Of course, as you could see, I didn't then, because I'm here now. Hugh Thomas studied on what the two old swampers had told him. Then he smiled. Y'all are just funning, right? Did that turkey really weigh 500 pounds? More or less, Papa Daddy answered, snapping his suspenders and winking his eye. And was that legend really over 400 years old? Give or take a year or two. Elder Abijon answered, swatting a mosquito. Was it really still burning? Well, let's just say it was flickering a bit. And with their tale all told, the two men rode away. Remember, Pop, remember, Papa Daddy called just before they disappeared into the curtain of the fog. Strange things do happen on the Bayou Clapito. Now Hugh Thomas was alone with only the worrisome mosquitoes to keep him company. But it wasn't long before he had caught three small fish. And in the next half hour, he caught a million more! Can you believe it? What? Big ones, little ones, all sizes. The boy was so excited that he whooped with joy. Wait till Papa, Daddy, and Elder Abijon see this! Then, loading his magnificent catch on his wagon, he turned to leave. But without warning, two yellow eyes surfaced just above the waterline. Hugh Thomas knew that it was Atu, the grand pair of all the alligators on Jackson's Point. The old gator slithered onto the bank, blocking the boy's way. 
<laughs> Where do you think you will go with all the fish? He hissed angrily. Hugh Tomix blinked. Why, that gator was talking right out. Th th these are my fish, the boy answered with an uncertain spirit. Atu's mean eyes took in the catch. Animals for me and mine to eat if I let you take them all. Hugh Thomas considered making a run for it, but the old gator must have read his mind. Don't even think it. He warned, inching closer. Then he chuckled softly. <laughs> Your best chance is to figure on this. One hundred alligators, one hundred feet long, can move at one hundred yards a second. How long have would it take us to get from this water to you and your wagon of fish? Answer now, he asked, hissed, still moving closer. Not long enough for me to get away, Hugh Thomas thought. Deciding that anything was better than tangling with Adu and all of his kin, he solved the riddle by throwing a god goodly amount of fish back into the bayou. You make the right answer, Etu said. Then he turned and disappeared beneath the dark waters. Along with the hundred dollar other alligators who had been watching and waiting. Hugh Thomas took a quick count and saw he still had close to half a million fish left. He followed the swamp path that was the quickest way to Papa Daddy and other Abidjan's houseboat. Story had it that John Paulette's pirate treasure was hidden somewhere amongst the cypress knees. Hugh Thomas wasn't interested. I've got my own treasure, he boasted. The air grew thick, hovering over the swamp like a big smothering hand. Then the still came, a terrible kind of silence with its own sound. The boy hummed and quickened his step. Something was stalking him, closing in fast. The ghost of John Paulette, maybe? No! Hugh Thomas was suddenly surrounded by an army of raccoons, led by the most notorious rogue of them all, Mosley. By my leave, shouted the bandit leader. We'll be demanding a toll, little sir. And you are gonna fish there would do nicely. Wait, you Thomas called right out. That's not fair. Not fair, says he, Mosley scoffed. And what'll be fair to you? Half, maybe? Hugh Thomas couldn't believe he was bargaining with a band of pirate raccoons. I said all on half, mate, and we can take it all. So Hugh Thomas is Experiencing a lot of strange things in the swamp, isn't he? That's Atu. That's Atu. Up there. And this is a little band of raccoons. Now, if you don't know, another nickname for them would be Trash Panda. But I don't think Mosley would take too kindly in being called the Trash Panda. Thinking fast, Hugh Thomas had suggested, A contest? That's it! We'll have a contest of some kind. Mosley laughed coarsely. <laughs> a contest it'll be. You win, we take half to catch. I win, we takes it all. Mind you, that's as fair as it'll be getting. The boy agreed, not knowing what to expect. Swords? Pistols? Wrestling? Then, to his astonishment, Mosley whistled. <whistles> and two black bears appeared. Reaching beneath a huge swamp cabbage, the pirate pulled out a twenty-foot snake. Well, skip rope, says I. And so the contest began. The bears turned, and Mosley jumped. Hugh Thomas hadn't seen such fancy footwork in his life. That rascal skipped so hard and so fast he was down in a pit when he finally missed on jump 5,552. His motley crew sent up a loud cheer. But Hugh Thomas held his own. One thousand, two thousand... 3,000, 4,000, 4,050. Hugh Thomas jumped and jumped and jumped. 5,000. He was so tired, his legs hurt, but he jumped some more. 5,550. 5, he managed just three more jumps before missing, but it was enough to win. 5,553. Mosley was purely outdone. He went to grumbling and mumbling and swearing under his breath. But in the end, he made good on his word. I takes me again, and now I'll be taking me fish. One by one, hundreds of masked bandits marched past the wagon and plucked a juicy treat. Then Mosley found the plumpest fish for himself and beckoned Hugh Thomas to hurry along. Even though his catch was cut by, by half again, Hugh Thomas still felt like a winner. Moving with purpose, he passed the large cypress stump called Napoleon's Elbow, then quit the swamp. The 
Winding his way through the deserted grounds of the Moslem mansion, he held with tradition and threw part of his catch to the waterfowl that lived in the old garden pool. Since slavery times, fishermen believed that feeding these birds would bring them luck the next time he went out. Thief! Thief! A fish crow spied Hugh Thomas's catch and set up a signal. Birds darkened the sky. They swooped down, speared their fish, and soared away, screeching, Thief! Thief! Shoo! shouted Hugh Thomas. But the birds chased him across the parish road and under the trestle, stopping just short of the first house in Free Jack's quarters. Gentilly, the neighbor girl's cat, was sitting on the porch steps. Her gray eyes were fixed on a wagon full of plump fish. Why, it's a Christmas gift, the cat shouted, excitement swelling her words. To see you, that is, she added in a soft purr. Hugh Thomas was surprised that the cat was talking, and to him. Most of the time, Chantilly wouldn't even look in his direction. It's not my custom. It's not my custom to report on my mistress's whereabouts, but if you want to see Miss Shelley Pearl, she's with Walter Edward out back in the okra patch. Can't you hear them laughing together? Without thinking, Hugh Thomas hopped the fence and disappeared around the house. Some time later, he came back with his friend in tow. He was talking all excited and explaining, Come see for yourself! It was a million fish! Shelly Pearl stopped. What million? I see three little fish! Hugh Thomas was completely confused. Then he looked at Chantilly and understood. You tricked me! He accused her. You ate my fish! Say you did! The cat blinked innocently and cleaned her whiskers. Shelly Pearl scooped her up her pet. You must be addled, Hugh Thomas. Come telling that wobber, then lay in blame on my poor precious kitty cat. And she marched away in a huff. Meanwhile, a chorus of Chantilly's friends meowed contentedly as they licked their paws. With only three fish left, Hugh Thomas followed the path to the backwater slough where Papa Daddy and Elder Abijon's houseboat was tied up. They were sitting on the front porch playing checkers. Seems the bio let you come away with a fire to catch this morning, Elder Abijon said, smiling. Best luck a fisherman can have is to catch just enough for dinner, Daddy, Papa Daddy put in. But I caught a million more, the boy boasted. What happened to him is a long story. Papa Daddy pulled his straw hat down over his eyes. Elder Abijon leaned back in the old cane chair, and both of them propped their feet up on the railing. So, you've learned that the Bayou Clavado is a mighty strange place. Tell us now, was it really a million? A smile broke through Hugh Thomas's face, and he winked his eye. More or less, he answered, and started right in on his tail. So, kids, what did you take away from this story? I think the best stories come from from exaggeration. Tall tales and tales and folk stories are some of my favorite stories. You know they're not true, but there is some degree of truth in it. And I think there's a truth in every fictional story. So, in a way, it's just like real life almost. <laughs> well, I want to thank you so much for listening along to me. If you guys would like, please like and subscribe to my channel, my channel for more stories for me to read to you and your children if they so wish to participate with you. Until then, see you next week!